Well, good evening, USPCA members. It's Larry Lynch here for another one of our sessions on tonight networking. And, and I've talked to so many of our members about the importance of making sure that you're networking with others out there. What you have to do in this marketplace, you have time on your hands. You're thinking, gosh, I'm locked in the house or I can't go here. These groups aren't meeting. But in fact, there are so many opportunities for you out there. And I'm really excited uh, to have a good friend and, and colleague Ruth Ann Delore join us tonight. And, and I've gotten a chance to know Ruth Ann for years. She does a lot of the association's printing for us. Uh, but it's not just that. She is probably one of the best networking people I know and has really built her business. And it is a, much like you, a local business, right? And it's built on that local networking she's done to get to know people in the community and really engage with them uh, to do things that are unique. And so she's got a fantastic story to, to share with you tonight. Uh, and really give you some good ideas on things that you can do to engage now in this whole new world of virtual meetings and doing things differently to make sure that you're getting word out there about you and your business. So a couple housekeeping things, as always a reminder, uh, Q&A is the ideal spot to make sure that we're uh, getting the questions in. I will be watching them on Ruth Ann's behalf. We'll get those later. Of course, if you don't hit Q&A, there's always chat. Either way, I'm watching and monitoring both on our behalf, so we'll make sure we're watching for that. Um, the great thing about virtual meetings is I don't have to tell you where the bathrooms are. They're in your house. So uh, it's a good thing. But uh, to that, that said, I'm excited tonight to, to welcome everyone here. Um, I'm excited that we have Ruth Ann joining us. And at this point, Ruth Ann, uh, the evening is yours and we'll be back with Q&A in a little while. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. I'm Ruth Ann. As he mentioned, I'm thrilled to be here. I am a small business owner just like you. I started from scratch after spending many years in corporate America and saying, I can do this, I know I can. And the biggest, most dreaded word in the world is networking. I am just an odd person that loves to network. I know I'm unusual. The rest of the world can't stand it. It's part of your business plan, or sometimes you don't even put it as part of your business plan because networking can be very intimidating. I don't know if you've ever walked into a room and looked around and said, they all seem to know each other. How, how can they all know each other? And I don't know anybody here. And you're just so intimidated. You wanna run into the ladies room or perhaps the men's room and just hide because it is the most intimidating thing in the world to walk into a room of a lot of people to network and it seems like everybody else knows each other. They don't really, but it sure feels like that. And I'm a girl from Jersey. Uh, I live in Florida now, but I don't have a shy bone in my body. And about 12 years ago, I was going to an association meeting that somebody told me that I really needed to join. So I was going and that exact thing happened to me. I mean, I'm not shy in the grocery store, and I felt intimidated. And it's a scary thing. Another really horrible thing that happens with networking is when you're in a group and you're all talking to each other and somebody says, do you all know each other? Or if you're from Florida, it's do you all know each other? And well, no. Well, okay, let's introduce ourselves. Oh my God. Because you're thinking about what you're going to say. You don't even hear who's in the group. You don't know who's saying what, but you're thinking, hi, my name is Susie. Uh, no, God, my name's not Susie. Um, that was Susie before me. And, and so many people mess up on that part of clearly having something like that that talks about what you do and how you do it in a very simple way. Um, and that is one of the keys to networking is being able to introduce yourself well and because the introduction is the beginning of networking. It's the beginning of discovering if the person you're talking to uh, is a foodie. In my case, my husband is definitely a foodie. He would love being here. And they are enthralled with what you do. Um, it's, I wish I could say that I had something as exciting as, as a personal chef. Um, no, well, I have a print and sign shop, big deal. Um, it's, it makes it wonderful to have rapport with people because somebody has something to say. All right, it may be that they think you're a private chef. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about what the difference is, but 
it develops rapport in a relationship. And I'm going to give you an example that sort of changed my world. Um, happened about six or seven years ago. I was on a um, association bus journey uh, to Tallahassee, Florida, the capital. Uh, with a bunch of people a part of the association going to uh, talk to politicians uh, about tourism because if you're in Orlando tourism is our world and uh, as we well know with COVID um, but tourism is important and so we were going up there to talk to politicians about it now I need to tell you don't tell anybody but I'm not a political junkie so why would I decide that I wanted to uh, put myself on a bus with a political junkies? Well, it's networking. Three quarters of the people are on the bus are potential customers. This is just re really great. You've got 10 hours with them. How cool is that? It's opportunities like that that you think are not in your comfort zone that make it wonderful. So I end up sitting next to a young lady that I've seen before. I don't know what she does on the way back after five hours up and we do our thing we get in the in the uh, bus and she opens up this picnic basket with this wine that's just amazing and chocolate covered figs and all kinds of charcuterie and obviously foodie um, but we start talking and I need to tell you that we discovered so many things in common from trips to Italy uh to a love of cooking all right i'm not the cook my husband is um but by the end of it she said to me i really really would love you to join a women's group that i put together of women who are powerhouses in whatever they do i'm thinking i don't do chick groups i i just don't but i liked her a ton we hit it off definite rapport from hi, how are you? That's what you really want to achieve. What's the net result? We fast forward six years. Three of my top 10 customers today came from that chick group that I didn't want to join. And that person, that lady that I met, who's a high powered lawyer, um, is one of my closest friends and she's my lawyer. So how do you start with networking? I alluded to that, that it really starts with an elevator pitch. You know, that's a saying that came up years and years and years ago that basically talks about uh, the amount of time it takes to come down an elevator, uh, which is about 30 seconds usually, um, that you could explain who you are. When somebody says, well, who are you? Um, and you could explain who you are. Uh, I'm here to tell you that the adult attention span is eight seconds. So skip the 30. You can't do that. You don't want to lose them. How many people have you met who starts expl start explaining what they do and you just look like, really? Really? Does this guy or gal ever shut up? You just want to be an icebreaker. And I need to tell you that what you all do as a profession is a huge icebreaker because you're going to get lots of questions back you're going to get immediate engagement from people and the tell me about yourself comes from that you know tell me your story tell me how you started what made you interested in food and people are going to remember you and what you want to achieve out of a conversation like that is who you are and what you do because each of you do something a little different. Um, you know, you focus on different things. Some of you may be really big in events and parties and wine tasting. Um, some of you uh, may do, you know, two customers a day, bless you. Uh, that's a lot of work. Um, but each of you are different. And so it's explaining what you want. Because when you look at your business, what is it that you want to expand? What is it that's most important to you? Um, and somehow in the course of conversation, communicating, communicating that to them. It's, it's, a, a, um, it's a simple way of saying, hi, you know, I'm Susie, you know, I'm a personal chef, uh, and uh, I focus on 
I'm cooking um, meals and meal planning, but I've started wine tastings and they're just huge. So if that you want to expand into, it's, it's such an opening for people. I don't know many people who don't like wine and food. The basics of an elevator pitch or an introduction is to introduce yourself, big smile, and great handshake. Because I've seen so many people with really wimpy handshakes. And that communicates something to the other person if you don't have a really great handshake. Now, you don't need to break their hand, but big smile, happy to meet them. Provide a summary of what you do. Um, if your job is difficult to explain, find an easy way to explain it. If, how, if what you do is different, simplify it. And the objective of what you want. And this requires, this sounds so simple, but it requires preparation because every audience is different. Every single audience has a different clientele. And so you need to adjust your introduction based upon who's gonna be there. What are you gonna be talking about? It depends on whether you're, you could be at, at a wine club. Well, then you're gonna talk about something completely different than if you're a rotary meeting. That doesn't mean there aren't amazing contacts to be had at both but you should prepare ahead of time in your mind what it is that you want to communicate to them. And in the world of Zoom, there is so much networking that can be done. I find it amazing. I didn't think that with COVID-19 that there would be so many opportunities, but there are. It's about just putting yourself out there and joining some groups and doing some Zoom meetings and people will know who you are um, and suddenly they'll think about you. Um, practice, practice, practice what you have to say because you don't want to be the one who was in that group stumbling over what it is your message is. Talk to yourself in the mirror. Talk to your spouse, significant other, your kids. Um, also, I usually try and test it out on a small group. So I'm going to a group where I don't think there are really going to be that many people that are going to be interested in what I do. Let me, let me try it. And the test run on what your pitch is, if it generates questions and dialogue, then you've hit a home run. If you get somebody who just looks like they're bored, maybe you need to redo your, your introduction. For all of you, that's a really easy thing because you're not talking about um, um, widgets, you're just talking about food. Very few people in this world don't love food and wine. The hardest part for me, and I don't do a very good job of it because I'm from New Jersey, is to take your time. I guess you've discovered I talk a little fast. Take your time. Don't rush, breathe deep and have confidence, have confidence. Always remember, you know yourself better than they do. So you're talking about you and you know you better than they do. So have confidence in what you do. I also wanted to tell you, which I should have told you at the beginning was sending out slides on all of this. So you don't have to take notes. You just have to think of questions that you might want. One of the things that you have to think about when you're putting together your introduction is what makes you distinctive? What makes you different at what you do than everybody else? There can be other people who do it, but you may specialize in something, whatever that is, and use that as part of your conversation. And always remember to reciprocate. I can't do that in this format, but if we were in a room and I was presenting to all of you, there'd be a lot of interaction. Tell me what you do. Talk to me about what makes you distinctive. Hand it over, because people like nothing more than to talk about themselves. So let them talk about them. Let them ask you questions. And it develops rapport. 
It's a wonderful thing. Common mistakes. Don't be pushy. It's not a sales call. It really isn't. It has nothing to do with sales. It's an introduction. I didn't get on the bus to sit next to somebody with the intent of selling them anything. But I walked out of there um, with a friend who gave me tons of referrals because that's what we're all about. Whether you're in the personal chef business or you're in the printing and sign business, we're all about referrals. Keep your introduction brief. You know, it's not a 30 minute speech. Their, their eyes will really roll on that. Avoid humor. Now, I know that sounds uh, surprising for me because you've discovered I like humor. Humor is part of what I do. But what I mean by that is the person who takes what they do and says, oh, what do you do? I push drugs. Really, I do product marketing for a pharmaceutical company. You know, it's not, that's, this is not the time, an appropriate time for humor. During networking conversations, there's plenty of opportunity for humor to make people feel comfortable, to make yourself feel comfortable. Um, you know, don't be too vague. I'm a chef. Well, what does that mean? You know, you know that there are so many ways to define that. Um, you know, or I work as a consultant or I work in finance. Well, that's just so vague. Um, what does it mean? I help companies unleash hidden value. What the heck is that? You know, are you, what do you do? Your cost analysis? You know, is that what you do? Is cost analysis? You know, tell me what it is that you do. Are you a financial planner? You don't know. That doesn't describe anything to me. Also, avoid industry jargon. And the food business and the chef business has jargon. And not everybody understands it. So avoid it. Because you want to make sure they clearly understand who you are and what you do. And I guess one of the things that I've seen over the years is that there's a number of people who are not on their best behavior when they're networking. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it, it's the aggressiveness combined with inappropriate behavior. And I'm going to give you a quick example that happened just before COVID. I was at an association meeting of about 45 timeshare executives. I was the sponsor of the meeting. And there was one other vendor there whose job was just to sit and take notes and report back to the board. I knew everybody in the room. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, so I'm like a social butterfly. I'm talking to the chairman and I see this other vendor out of the corner of my eye. And I give myself the pep talk that says, come on, with him, be nice. You know, be nice. Introduce him. He's a newbie. Introduce him. So I said, John, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Let me introduce you to George. George is blah, 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 vice president of this, this, and this with this company. And John works for this company. And John says, Oh, you're the guy who never returns my emails. Oh. So I'm standing there and because I'm never at a loss for words, I start yapping. And I said, you know, John, he's, he's really, really busy. Do you know how he's got 2,200 rooms in his property and he's got like a gazillion people working for him. And please do not feel bad if he's not returning your emails because, um, like I've been doing business with him for 15 years and he doesn't return my emails until he needs me. And rest assured, they're not ignoring you. They don't need you right now, but they will. And I tried and he wouldn't shut up and I walked away. And I'm like, really? You're not getting it, man. So at the end of the meeting, when all the muckety mucks were all gone, I pulled John to the side and I gave him the jersey to talk to and said, are you kidding me? This is completely inappropriate. This, this is a networking event. We don't do that. We don't make the guests here feel awkward. And um, I wasn't very nice about it. 
Um, he was not very happy, I'm sure, but I didn't care. Um, it was wrong. He made, he made all of us who were vendors look bad. He did email me later that night and said after he got over being mad, um, he realized how I was right and he was wrong and he wanted advice on how to try to fix it with George. So you will see some inappropriate behavior. Please make sure it's not you. Uh, we try not to. I occasionally will, will put my foot or leg in my mouth, but I really try not to. So an elevator speech is part of the whole networking process. And the purpose of networking, as we discussed, is to get to know each other and to get to know other people. And if you're really lucky, they refer business to you. And that's what it's all about. Some key pointers. Listen more than you talk. You're going to learn a lot. And it may be something you can use down the road. Prepare, know you where you're going and who's the audience. Uh, we talked about that some. And ask questions. And the reason why questions are really important, and you should have a whole list of them, because when there's a lull in the conversation, you need to continue to engage with that individual so that you guys find some common ground um, and end up with a, a good rapport at the end that they're going to remember that this is what you do and this is who you are. Um, lulls happen in conversation. They happen and all over the place. You can be networking in the supermarket. You can be networking at a cocktail party. And make it about them. You know, how long have you been with your company? How did you start? Did you start with this company or, or did you start with something different? Have you always been in the industry? And these people love to talk about themselves. So these are questions that just need to come naturally. And if you're not comfortable with that, find filler topics. All right, I'm in Florida. Anybody on the East Coast? We're gonna be talking about hurricanes. Okay, what's going on in Florida it was we prepared and nothing came. It was just a test run. If you're in the Carolinas, that's no test run. And if you're in the East Coast, you're gonna get really wet and lots of flooding. Big, big topic. Um, could be commute time, depending upon where you are. You can start whining about the commute time. Do you have a long commute? Don't you? Do you cover only the area or the market that you're in? How about COVID-19? That's a, that's a gold mine for conversation. You know, do you know anybody? Have you had any issues? Do you have employees? You know, how are you handling it? These are all questions to continue dialogue. And it works during Zoom too, really does. Um, and I guess um, one of the things you also need to think about is giving instead of receiving. Understand who that person is. They've told you what they want. Can you hook them up, introduce them to somebody who might fill that need? Because it'll come back to you in spades. It really will. That person is gonna be so happy that you have given them what they wanted that they're gonna tell the world about your wonderful business. And one thing you guys can do as a whole is give to silent auctions. I say that because I'm on a lot of committees, tons of committees, again, networking, in a lot of different industries, whether it's an association or it's a rotary or any other type of a charitable organization. Um, and they all seem to have silent auctions or some sort of fundraiser thing. Give up your services. Because you're going to wow somebody and they're going to tell everybody in their group, oh my God, I bid on that last year. That was the greatest thing in the world. Don't touch it. Don't touch it this year. It's mine. And then that creates this little frenzy that more people want it. And before you know it, they pay for it. And they tell others and you've developed new clients out of it. Um, I'm really a, a big believer in that if you give, it comes back to you. 
Key networking points. Don't get stuck with one person. Sometimes you can start having a conversation and this person just like sucks all the time. Plan and make a goal. Every time you go to an event, I want to meet three new people. You want to work the whole darn room. You just want to have three new contacts or whatever that goal is. You need to circulate. You need to get your face out there and you need to meet some other people. Don't get stuck with one. One of the biggest problems is once you do get in a group and, and an association that you're comfortable with, is that we tend to gravitate to those that we know and love. So we're the ones doing the hugging that I was talking about way in the beginning. And we don't network ourselves. All these people I'm hugging and kissing, they all know me. Um, but there are new people in the room. And so I have to remind myself, even after doing this for 25 years, building businesses, I have to remind myself that I want to meet three new people. I want to see how I can help them. Because I know if I help them, it'll come back to me. Another suggestion I'll make, and I learned this the hard way, is what I call dig deep, not wide. What that means is I've met people who've joined every single thing known to man. Oh, they're in Rotary, they're in Kiwanis, they're doing this association and that association, and they're in the wine club, and they're in the food club. And you cannot do justice to any of those things because you never get deep enough. You're never at every single event. And some of these places have lots of events and because you've spread yourself so thin, you can't do them all. Hey, you run a business too. This isn't, you know, you got a business that you're running um, and you're really busy. And so this is to market your business, but you're trying to do too much. Pick two or three that you're most comfortable with. And if this is new to you and you really, really are intimidated, pick one, pick one, get involved. Go and learn and talk to people and network. And the more you do, the more you give, the more that comes back to you. And they get to know who you are. They don't get to know that person who shows up every once in a while because you're so overbooked. So dig deep in a couple organizations. Don't join a ton of them. And one of the things that drives me nuts, and this is just a personal pet peeve, is that after you're done with all your networking and we're, and we're gonna sit down to a lunch or a breakfast, be quiet during the presentations. That's not the time to network. It's rude to the speaker. See here, you can't interrupt me. Life is pretty cool. Um, everybody's on mute. Um, but it's a distraction to your table mates as well. And the last thing I'm gonna say is make sure you follow up on that referral. You can't believe the number of people who don't do that, who are out there to get business. And business is really hard today and they don't follow up on the referral. I gave you a lot of information, most of it's common sense, but I've been doing it a really long time. What I want to end with is a thought, and it's a quote from Jeffrey Gittimer, that says, all things being equal, people want to do business with their friends. So go out there and expand your horizons and find new friends. Thank you for your time. I'm going to turn it back over to Larry. I had to push all the right buttons there to get us started. So no, we've got a number of questions, but I'd, I'd like to kind of start with that. Um, you know, people struggle because here we are in the midst of a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. um, the kind of face-to-face -face things that we would normally do when, and I guess one of the real, the real world, you can't do. And, and I think people struggle with networking as it is. Mm -hmm. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there, when we think about networking, it's not just the formal, you know, let me go to a meeting and, and see how many people I can shake hands with. Networking is an opportunity we do every day. I mean, one of the things I think I've shared with a number of chefs you know, gosh, you know, go shopping, wear your chef coat, because right. it, it, that's over here. if you're in a hospital, right, 
you're walking down a hall and you see somebody coming at you in jeans and a t-shirt and something coming at you with a lab coat, you're going to ask for medical advice. It, it just, it, and it's got to be genuine, right? It, it, the other piece, I, I think back to my days at Disney and uh, we had an event out in California for the opening of one of the, the, the new theme parks. And we were all kind of betting on one individual who's known for making sure they shook everybody's hands at just the right time or just the wrong time. And uh, sure enough, Bob Iger had just recently been introduced as the new number two guy at the company. And this person was running up the stage right after. And, and you kind of lose that, that genuine warmth that comes with, you know, to your point, this is about the opportunity to kind of give first, get okay. second, reach out and connect. And so, you know, I think it, it's, it's to me anyhow, far less about, you know, I'm going to go to this meeting. And, and I mean, that's always part of it. But to me, you know, every interaction is an opportunity to network, to get to know somebody, to understand what it is that they do. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in that constant formal um, exposure, you know, I'm out there. So, you know, I want to emphasize to people that are concerned that the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic, we sure are, but I'm meeting people every day. And, you know, I, <laughs> I've shared in my other world, Back in March, I had to fly up to New York City, just as kind of New York was being seen as the epi epicenter in March. And, and it was surreal, you know, and, and I had to do 41 nonstop television interviews one morning. Um, and Times Square was empty. And, and I came back and this background that you've seen, that it, and if anybody's seen me on TV, it's the same stupid background you see on television. I, I am living um, Bill Murray's Groundhog's Day every day. But yet I still meet people every day and I have a chance to engage every day. I mean, this morning, you know, I spent a half hour on the phone with Deborah Burks from the White House. You know, how often do you have those opportunities to make sure that you can show your credibility and, and make an offer to help? You don't know where that's going to come back and, and, and help you. So I would strongly suggest that, you know, everybody that's concerned about this being a pandemic, you know, it's, it's lemonade from a lemon. Let's, let's figure out where it's there. So. I want to get to a couple of questions here, I know, because I'll get beat up by my members because they're such great people if I don't get a chance to ask these questions. Uh, first of all, I do have to add that uh, Laura McDougall, who heads up our New England chapter, says hello from a fellow Jersey girl. So, <laughs> Hello. One of the questions that came up was, uh, we should have different questions for a Rotary group than another group. Do you have ideas on what to ask group leaders to find? This is good find out what group leaders uh, represent the demographics of your group. So if you are actually gonna do kind of a formal presentation or a formal opportunity to meet with people, that you can get in and, and uh, have a chance to understand who they are and, and address them. I think that's a really great question. And, and when you talk about a formal opportunity, which means that you're gonna to try to be the speaker at a Rotary group or a Kiwanis group or some other group, um, it is great to know the demographics, but I'm gonna be really, really candid with you. You don't know who they know. So the demographic may not be exactly what you want or what you would target, but they know tons of people. And so talking about who you are to an audience that may not fit perfectly doesn't mean that you're not gonna get a referral to somebody who does fit perfectly. And I will give you an example. That young lady I met on that bus, man, she uses personal chefs. She throws a lot of events. I just was sitting next to her drinking some wine, okay? Do we, are we the same? Not at all. But if I knew one of you um, in Orlando, I have like half a dozen people that I can easily refer you to. But yet, you may have come to a Kiwanis club or to a Rotary club and not felt it was the right demographic. That's my first comment because you don't know who they know. And I've gotten so many referrals from other people uh, that you wouldn't expect, you know? And the second thing is to ask some questions about who attends the meeting. And it's a, it's a common question for some of these to figure out who's coming. And when you're asking a, a spe uh, somebody who assigns or, or, or uh, books speakers, they have an answer for you. And I would tell you who our Rotary group is. Right, you know, our Rotary group's 25% old guys. All right, it's the old guys that sit in the corner. However, we've got a young demographic as well, but we've got the who's who in Orlando in our group. Okay, we got some really powerful players 
in our group. So it's a mixture of a lot of different things. There are some young people under, I say young, okay? Under the age of 35, um, <laughs> we have uh, the old guys, they're sitting at the corner table. Um, and, and then you have the business people, people like me, own their own business, uh, driving their business forward. You have executives, you have people who are, have been executives at Disney, you are executives at Universal. So you would get a very candid feedback on who the group is. So I'd ask the question, but I'd also remember every audience is a good audience because you don't know who they know. Perfect. By the way, I want, to, I want to send a shout out and thank you to Elizabeth Bourget, because what you don't see that I'm seeing is we have a troll in our Q&A section, and uh, she made a comment. Unfortunately, you know, in any organization, and I don't think this person's even part of the organization, but, you know, losers are going to be out there and sad. Uh, yeah. But uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for that. So a note from Laura um, I wanted to point out there. Tips for when, when you do know everyone in the room. You know, intros have already happened. Now what do I do? Oh, that's, that's, you figure out who it is that you think would be a great, um, target's the wrong word, but the great person to provide you with a referral or a great person for your services. And you try to get to know them a little better. What I have always done is, um, up until uh, Larry's going to smile, but I, I try to rotate where I sit. I try to make sure that I'm sitting with different people because you'll never know who, who these people are until you get to know them a little bit better. Um, in our rotary group, there was a guy who I thought was just like, he didn't like me. He probably didn't like me because I'm a big mouth and I'm a girl. Um, but I thought that, and it turns out he's really shy, amazingly shy. Um, I fell in love with him. Uh, he's, all right, he's 75, but really, really wealthy. And you, I mean, like crazy wealthy. And you would have never, ever known that. I would have never known that had I not sat next to him and we started talking things. And I got to know him pretty well. So if you know everybody in the group, you still don't know everything about them. They, you know, you still don't know. And they really don't know you. They don't know. They hear how you print. You know, there are so many people in, in, in my group who you just signs too? Well, yeah, no kidding. Um, just like you, you know, I'm a personal chef. Oh, you mean you'll do events too? I never thought that you might do an event. Get out of here. You know, really? You've only known me for four years. Um, so there's always um, conversation happen. Work the room. The other thing is to just ask for a referral. Ask people, you know, during, you, know, you may have a chance to get up and talk and say, you know, You'll never guess what happened to me this week. I had this most amazing thing. I threw a wine party, a wine tasting, and this is what happened and that would happen. And you know what's gonna happen after you get up and say that? At the end of the meeting, you're gonna have three or four people come up. I didn't know you did wine parties. I didn't know you did wine tastings. I didn't know you did that. So don't for one minute believe you don't know that everybody in there knows about you. They just, you haven't hit the right button with each one of them, so they're gonna give you a referral. That's awesome. Uh, Laura wrote this. I thought this was a good one. She said she started a conversation wearing chef shoes at a doctor's appointment and a lady asked her about them and said the next thing you know she had three cards passed out in the doctor's office. So you know clearly the smallest thing can engage somebody in a conversation which is important. Absolutely and you're in the perfect profession because I'd come up to you. Oh my God, talk to me. What do you do? Where do you, where are you a chef? Are you at one of the restaurants or one of the hotels? And then you're going to tell me you're in your own business. And then I'm going to be thrilled because I did the same thing 20 years ago. So. Well, and the stories, and this is, again, I shared with you before we started, the phenomenal stories that our members can share about their backgrounds in food and the passion for food and how they cook and what they cook and the impact of their families. There's so many great things to, to talk about that most people don't have. So, they so don't. Yeah. this is a great question. Um, one of our chefs asked, what is the best way to start networking to new clients to expand this during this pandemic season? And, and I say pandemic season is going to extend itself quite some time here, but what can you suggest to people? Uh, there's several things you can do. Uh, the simplest thing is, is to uh, join a community group. 
uh, an association. You've heard me talk about Rotary. I'm in love with Rotary, but there's so many other different community groups that want, they're looking for speakers because sometimes in the Zoom world, it, people are, are not available. You could be a speaker, but you could just ask to come as a guest. And you'll be surprised what happens. Um, the doors are open to a lot of these places. Also, if there's a group um, that you see, uh, go to their website, ask to join. Do you have Zoom meetings? If you go to the web website of our Rotary Club, or if you go to the website to the two associations that I do a lot of work with, one is the Hotel and Lodging Association, um, and the other one is a, a Property Manager Association, they welcome. At this time, they're welcoming visitors. You can become a member, but that's what their motivation is. But they also, you know, half the people who are part of an organization have dropped off the face of the earth. They've thought that networking doesn't happen during this pandemic. I need to tell you, I have picked up more new customers in the last 12 weeks than I did all of last year. Well, now I'm not telling you my business is what it was last year. Come on, I'm in Orlando. But what I'm saying to you is that because of Zoom and because you're talking to people and there's just coffee, ch all three of the play organizations I belong to just have, they have social nights. So, you know, bring your glass of wine, have some fun, and you just get to know each other. And they usually go after the new guest or the new member to say, tell us about you. Tell us about you. What do you do? How do you do it? So that would be my recommendation. Anything to add, Larry? Well, you know, one of the things, and this actually came up in one of the, the, the questions, is the fact that you also don't have to belong to everything that's out there. No. One of the members pointed out, and I think it's a great point, that, that she had joined a local Rotary Club and I think a business networking group. And let's face it, I mean, you know, when I was very active at the district level with Rotary a couple of years ago, um, her Rotary Club's like six people in them. And you're right, if you join that, you're probably not gonna get a lot out of it versus ours that has 90 plus members in it. Right. But joining isn't a part of it. I mean, th this is why I say it's, it's really about starting out with, you know, at that one-off opportunities, whether it's the grocery store, at school, at, at a religious activity, whatever it might be that you're engaged in, that's where the networking really begins. That may lead to an invitation to, to have a chance to network at one of these broader groups, but it doesn't cost you money. You don't necessarily have to join you know, but it really is becoming about engaging people. It's not about being a wallflower. You know, and, and I think that's part of the problem is if, if we sit back, we don't engage with people in conversation and right. it's genuine conversation. Um, and, and to Laura's point in her note, you know, it's the littlest things that, cre that can create conversations. Sitting in a, in a doctor's office wearing chef shoes that somebody's gonna look at them and say, that's unusual, that, that starts a conversation. Um, you know, and, and again, it, it's something as simple as you're, you're a chef. If you're wearing a chef coat going to the grocery store, then you've got something that's going to engage people in conversations, going to get them started. But I think the most important thing to understand is, and I think this is where I think everybody struggles a little bit in the midst of a pandemic when we're locked in rooms and we think, gosh, we, we can't get to, to talk to anybody. First of all, there are opportunities to go out. Grocery stores have been open throughout all of this, and there's no greater connectivity than someone who's cooking for somebody in a grocery store. Um, yeah, you're behind a mask, hopefully. Um, you're engaging people in conversation, but there are things exterior to the mask that can start the conversation. Uh, you can be creative. One of the things that I did with the mask is I had masks created with the Hira Chef logo on them. And the very first time I wore them, after I got them in, I was at a Whole Foods and I was getting some fish. And while getting the fish, turns out that the, the guy who was the fishmonger had been a chef at a restaurant and left his job and, and heard about personal chefs and thought, what a great opportunity. Let me, let me talk about that. You know, so even something as simple as a mask can have an opportunity. You've got to figure out how to turn, you know, lemons into lemonade. And, and that's what it's all about. You know, one of our chefs just wrote in and said, it's about opening up the conversation Absolutely. and being able to tell your story and having the story to tell. And you have a very engaging product to talk about. Your business is just one of those things that gets people asking questions or telling you stories, telling you about grandma's gravy, not the sauce, the gravy from the Italian family and how they did it. And the next thing you know, you're having dialogue in the supermarket, in the doctor's office, somewhere about it. And the same goes with Zoom networking. 
They have coffee chats in a lot of these. Just go ahead and, and, and join, ask your friends. Ask, are you doing any Zooming? What organizations are, are you doing it with? What, you know, is that something that I would enjoy to meet other people? And they're gonna come and tell you, yeah, you should come to this one. You know, my church meets, or, you know, there's a women's group or a guys group that meets. Come join us. And that's, start asking questions. So one of our members that we're in a pandemic with a mask and, you know, six feet of distancing. And, and so, first of all, the six feet of distancing is important, but the mask is there regardless, or if you can hit six feet, but it doesn't stop a conversation from happening. And uh, I, I don't know how to get past that struggle. I really don't know how to get past that. You know, if, if you're not comfortable being out there, then I don't know how you're going to go into somebody else's home and cook. I, I don't have the right answer for that. And I apologize to anybody that can't quite figure that part of it out. Um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, you got to figure out how to get through this in a pandemic. If you sit back and let the pandemic take you over, then you're right. You're, you're not going to get anywhere. But you have to look at where those opportunities are, where they lie. Believe me, I, I, nobody's gotten more tired than me in sitting in this room doing it. But I do get out every once in a while, you know, with people who I trust, who I feel confident you know, don't, don't have the virus um, that I can go out and have a conversation with, or I still have to go to the grocery store. I still go places that I have to get out and buy things. If for no other reason, I just need to get out. But, but yeah, I, I, I struggle with how to give the right answer to that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, again, you know, yeah, there may be a plexiglass barrier between me and somebody else, but, but at the end of the day, um, I, I can still, uh, have these conversations. So I, I would hope that people can figure out a way to, to, to engage. And, and, and again, I don't have all the answers to what that might be. Um, I don't either. And I know that I saw one of the comments about, you know, we're in lockdown and, and uh, there are people who, who don't feel comfortable. And I don't feel as comfortable as Larry does. Um, and him and I have talked about that. But that's okay. I'm still network. I love Zoom. <laughs> I've learned to love Zoom, um, and, and there are ways to network that don't involve getting yourself uh, in, in an uncomfortable situation for you personally. Yeah. You know, one of our members just wrote and said, you know, make sure you're asking people if they're comfortable with the chef coming into their home. Right. And then talk about the precautions that people can take before coming in. And, and just to remind our members, one of the things that we did um, a couple of months ago was we developed a set of, of guidance documents so when you are going back to work, things you could do. And a number of our very creative members have taken that and put it up on their websites, sharing with their clients. Here's the things that I do as a personal chef to make sure I'm protecting myself and protecting you. Here's what I expect you to do as a homeowner on things that you can do to protect yourself and protect me. All things that you can engage people in conversation with, and that's part of the networking piece. Now, here's a good, here's a question that just came in. One of our members says, I like Zoom a lot, but, but how can I find my target market in a Zoom? And, and in this particular case, I, I think Zoom is the tool, right? right. It's, it's not how you're going to find it. I think it's, it's the engaging happens outside of that, you know? And, and so again, if, if you're struggling to find that opportunity to have a conversation with, um, with somebody, even on a, in a non-meeting atmosphere, then, you know, it, it's going to be hard to figure out. But if you can have that conversation, you can ask, when do you, you know, when do you get together? Or have a Zoom conversation. I mean, dear God, one of the things that we do, a group of us gets together every Thursday night over drinks, and we spend an hour on Zoom just catching up on what we've all done for the week, and you're part of that group. Um, you know, we, we find ways to make that, and it's things we used to do live, um, you know, and, and how we get around that, so. And one of the things that I've started doing in addition to that group is that there are some, um, I'm a franchise, so there are 900 of us, and there are some other um, bigger players, um, and we've all known each other for years, and there's five of us from all across the U.S. who get together every other week just to talk about things. Life, business, new opportunities, how are you getting new opportunities? Build a network. If you know people that are in the business, have a, have a Zoom meeting. Start brainstorming what you can do. And you know, Larry and I are talking about Rotary, and we happen to belong to the best Rotary group in the world. But I, my brother, I referred him to Rotary, and it took him three different clubs to find the one that was a great fit. 
because some of them are, you know, that 25% of the old guys in the corner, some of them are like full of those guys. That is not your target market. So try more. If you're doing a B&I that's a little harder networking, but, and it's not working for you, then find another one. You know, start looking. If it's not a good fit, then don't waste your time. And, and that's really what my advice is. Yeah. And there are other kinds of groups too. I mean, you know, what are your special interests? Those are a couple of them. Dear God, it can be church, it can be gymnastics, it can be Peloton, it can be weightlift. I, you name it, it can be out there. And, and one of the questions came in, how can you start a Zoom brainstorm meeting with USPCA? A great question. And I know Vince is on the call tonight. And so he's probably here shaking his head as I'm saying this, but I'm going to charge Vince with coming up with some suggestions on that. You know, and another one, <laughs> as you know, Vince, so that, that works out great. I have to call out Chef Brandon. He's wonderful. He's out in Denver, Colorado, and a great guy. He says, thanks for hosting. He said, come visit me soon. Brandon, I swear, when I'm finally comfortable getting back on an airplane, I will make a visit to Denver because my former business partner is out there, and so I promised them I would come visit. Um, or he says, and this is just as good, um, maybe I need to come down and do a charter fishing boat, uh, boat fishing trip sometime. And of course, you and I both have you know, been over on the coast with Ponce Inlet, has some great sport fishing, leaving right from Ponce Inlet. So uh, Brandon, I would tell you, come on down. We got stuff for you. Um, Laura McDougal writes in, and, and this will help some of our members who are wondering, Chef Deb, Chef Deb Cantrell. You don't know Chef Deb, but she's awesome. She's out of uh, Dallas, Texas, does some great work, and she is starting a group as well. So again, some great networking opportunities. And, and again, a number of members, Chef Deb, uh, Monica Thomas and others are really good at helping advise members of that. So all that's really cool. You learn from other people. This little group I have of other Minuteman owners, you know, I've gotten three or four different ideas on how to market my business that I would not have thought of had we not been chatting every other week. So it's a, it's a, a great thing to get together with other people and, and learn how they're doing it. One of the things that um, one of the chefs just asked is, what is BNI? Great question. Uh, uh, business Networking International. I built my business 20 years ago doing that. And it's more of a very structured, uh, you're, you need to give a referral, so you need to have a good network. Uh, but people also have to give referrals to you. It's a great way to start building your business. Um, you just have to be prepared to give referrals to other people that are in your group. So you may have somebody like me who's a printer or a sign company, you may have an accountant, you need to have referrals that you can find for them. And it's about giver's gain. It's about giving, because if I give you somebody, if I give you my friend who's the foodie, who's got like more money than God, you're gonna feel as if you need to find somebody for me because you've just generated, you just got lots of business from me and my referral, you're gonna start asking people. And that's the whole philosophy of BNI, giver's gain. Yeah, yeah. But that's a formal way of doing it, right? That's not the informal yeah, way. Very formal, yes. And I think what we're talking about here is the fact there's value in the informal component as well. But, um, and, and again, I wouldn't look to join anything right away. I, I would look for opportunities to engage people around them. You know, maybe it's an opportunity to come in and speak to them. That's great. Um, but I'm, I'm going to hold on to my money in this day and age and joining anything. But I'm certainly going to be asking what's out there and finding out what's in the community. Uh, one of the questions we just asked, how can I connect with Chef Deb? I will make sure that happens. Uh, what we didn't talk about at the beginning is we have a, a whole series of notes that uh, Uthiam prepared for the group that we'll be sending out after this to everybody who participated in the call. And we will make sure Chef Deb's contact information is in there. I don't know if Chef Deb's on the call or not tonight, uh, but if she's not, she's going to smack me tomorrow for saying this, but I'll make sure that we have her contact information in there. And uh, Chef Laura, hopefully you have my back in doing that, that I let her know that it's out there, but uh, I'm sure she'll appreciate it. So I think that's it. Let me just double check one more time on the questions. And I think, so if I missed any questions because we had some, oh, wait a minute. Um, here we go. So Chef Deb, and I'll copy this. Hang on, I copy and paste this. Bear with me here for just a moment. Chef Laura put it out there, so I'm gonna send this out to everybody once I get my click on all the right things. So here comes Deb, Chef Deb's information. So I just posted that in the chat area. And, uh, and, and Chef Brando says, which is very true, BNI is great if you can find the right group. Yes. He is a member of different referral groups and BNI just didn't work for him. And I think that's the point. Not everything is gonna work for you. And so it's finding the right thing. So 
Uh, and, and Brandon says, thank you, Ruthann. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so, nice to sort of meet you guys. <laughs> uh, I'd love to do it in person. Yes, I'd love to do it in person because I have all these questions for you. So we'll save that for next year when we have the conference in, uh, in uh, Florida. So you can join us. Are you? Oh, Paris cool. Soon. We, we are back and getting it again. So um, one of the things I'll make sure is that, again, I apologize that somewhere in there we had a troll. It happens. You know, it's, it's sad that organizations, that, that people sneak in. I always look at anybody that's, um, you know, gutless and don't want to bother putting their name to something. Sad. But I know the, the vast majority of members recognize that, that we try and do good work. And uh, I appreciate everybody's attendance tonight, participating. Lots of good questions, lots of good information. And uh, we think we're going to do it again. And we'll see you Thursday night. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Cool. Good night, everybody. And this will be posted here on Facebook very or not Facebook, I'm sorry, on YouTube very soon. And we'll be getting the information out to everybody. So, Ruthann, thanks again. And good night Thank to you. everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you.